show. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am so happy to be talking to you. Are you excited for Cinequest? I am, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're no stranger to film festivals, but every one, especially when it's the first reveal. For sure, yeah. You never know what to expect before it first comes out. That's why, like, the reviews we've been getting as you know, have meant so much to me, because it's really the first time. And we've had some, you know, some test screening feedbacks, but it's, it was an unfinished product and stuff, so it's just exciting to see what people think of the finished film. And I'm glad you mentioned that about test screenings, because a lot of people, so many filmmakers, they'll do test screenings without a finished product, and even mm -hmm. a lot of film festivals, and so many people submit unfinished films. Well, mm -hmm. that really doesn't do you much good, because... <laughs> right. <laughs> when yeah, the... it's challenging. It's hard, because actually Cinequest, I was lucky because Cinequest did accept the film with an unfinished product. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just one of those things like you don't want to miss all these great deadlines while you're finishing the movie, you know? And like, we had the test screenings, I think it was like September, October, and we just finished the film in March. So, I mean, we, we lost picture shortly after the test screenings, mm -hmm. maybe about within a month. But then, you know, sound work and color correction and all that t ended up taking a lot longer than we thought. Well, and I'm so excited you worked on your color correction because if you read my review, I love your mm -hmm. use of color and the saturation. Yes, I did read that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you, you noticed that because we try to do some of that, you know, with the flashbacks, differentiating them between present day. And, you know, usually they have flashbacks being desaturated, which right. is kind of a cliche. And I wanted it to be saturated not only because it was vivid in my character Jay's mind, but also for the 90s, it was, that was kind of, we were trying to emulate that look yeah. of film in the 90s, which was more saturated and contrasting too. Very much so, but I've never understood, I don't like the desaturation, denaturization, sepia-toned flashbacks, because when you're flashing back on something, you yourself, it's very vivid. And it's alive. Mm -hmm. It's not some dusty little thing off in a corner. <laughs> if, right. you're re if you're recalling something from your past, it is there front and center in, in your mind's eye. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I love that you have done. And then you bring up, you heighten the ambient texture of nature in that beautiful location that you're in so that everything is it's fresh and it gives us a lot of metaphor of Jay going forward and not backwards. Right, yeah. You know, a clean, fresh palette. You see those bright greens of the trees, and you just think it's fresh, it's alive. Mm -hmm. And that fits so beautifully with Jay's story about putting one foot in front of the other and moving on. Here is life right there. Grab it. And yeah, I'm glad you got all that from it. You did an amazing, amazing job with that. You and your DP, your colorist, I really love that. And then your design with Wenting's, you know, lensing, I love what you do with frame. Mm. As you take us in, we're closer with Lily and with Jay, then we widen out, widen out. We have flashbacks and things are closer mm -hmm. and more intimate. You've got some really beautiful tight two shots at all times with young Jay and you know, young Jess. And you slowly widen out as we get to that wedding scene and it's all white, a blank canvas. The future is ahead, mm -hmm. which picks up when Jay and Jess reconnect. And it's a much wider frame and slowly it comes in. It comes in as Jay is rediscovering herself, finding her footing thanks to Tommy. And I love how you use that framing. And you pick it up and you match young and old, but in reverse. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I loved how you, how you put that and how it served as a metaphor for their relationship. The other thing that, um, that we tried to do with the camera is when, she, when Jay was by herself to have it be completely static, Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want any movement to sort of emulate that emptiness uh, and, and, and feeling of, like, the void. And then um, with a lot of the scenes with Jess and Lily, which has uh, either overt tension or more of an underlying tension, 
we did a lot of handheld stuff. It was on an easy rig, um, which is slightly smoother and easier to do than actual strictly handheld. Mm -hmm. And then with Tommy, I wanted there to be kind of like an ease of motion, so we did a lot of more dolly stuff. Some of the dolly stuff is kind of subtle, but more of like a fluid kind of motion Mm -hmm. for a lot of those scenes. So we did that too. Yeah, the... Everything between Jay and Tommy, there is a great fluidity that even at times there's a lyricism that coincides with the rapport that you and Chad have. You guys on screen are fantastic together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we had a lot of fun, for sure. And also, like, for my character, because so many of my scenes are really just kind of, you know, serious and intense, like, he really just lightened it up and really showed a different side of Jay, and that was a lot of fun to do. Given the lyricism that comes with that bouncing ball back and forth, back and forth, tennis volley kind of uh, interplay, the camera picks up on that with the fluidity and the Mm -hmm. flow. And you really, I, I can't say enough about your technical acumen with this film, Michelle. (laughs) Well, thank you. That's nice of you. Really? But, you know, where did, what sparked this film? I mean, you are best known for your triptych trilogy. (laughs) You know. Right, right. Yeah, which are all comedies. And I think I, first I, when I shot my last um, comedy called S&M Sally, it was a lot of fun, but at that point I kind of felt like I wanted to take on a new challenge with things. And so at the time, you know, when I started writing the script, it's very loosely based and inspired upon relationships I've had. And I also, um, you know, went through a divorce with a woman many years ago. I lived on the East Coast and I moved out to Los Angeles. A lot of the story is fabricated other than that and right. the inspiration behind the main relationships and the main characters. But at the time that I wrote this, it was 10 years um, after my divorce. And so that was definitely still in my mind, but what was more in front of my mind was uh, a friendship I had with a gay man who, in a lot of ways, helped me kind of like open up and and move on, you know, and and that kind of thing in an unknowing way. And so that happened many years later. And I originally approached the script wanting to focus on the friendship between Jay and Tommy, and the Lily, which was is my wife in the movie, and Jess, which is the high school best friend that I'm secretly in love with, or, or what, what was secretly in love with. Um, those were kind of in the background, and then as I was rewriting the script, I tried to bring them more to the foreground because there was a lot of emotional truth there that we didn't see if I focused too much on Jay and Tommy. So I tried to focus on all three of the relationships, even though they're not necessarily given equal sc- screen time. Yeah, they don't need equal screen time, but what you also very keenly and smartly do is you keep us in Jay's POV. Mm-hmm. We don't lose that. As I even wrote, as much as I wanted to learn about Tommy and at the s'mores, cooking s'mores, and he won't divulge anything about his past, mm-hmm. and you really want, it's it's like, Jay, it's, no, tell me, you've made me tell you everything, tell me. And he gets mm-hmm. angry, and he won't, you really want to know. And you very easily could have gone down that rabbit hole, but you did wisely did not you kept this focus this story focused on jay and Mm -hmm. i so appreciate that because there are so many that would have gone down the rabbit hole and gotten totally kerfuffled as (laughs) right right yeah and i also thought it was just not necessarily like tommy's character to be vulnerable and reveal that side of himself and so that was part of it too but for sure and that was and the other thing is that was their their scene where, I guess I don't want to give away too much no, about we, how the movie ends. That's why I just call it the s'mores scene. <laughs> the s'mores scene, yeah. I, I think, like, I, I definitely obviously wanted the audience's empathy to align with Jay. And I think if he would have opened up too much, then our, our alliances would have been split. And, and I, I wanted you to be definitely on Team Jay at that point. Oh, absolutely. Otherwise, the whole journey falls apart. Mm-hmm. The whole purpose and intent that you have so built up the first two acts, it would have been gone. (laughs) (laughs) Right, 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 yeah. And you would have seen a review from me saying, what the f***? (laughs) What happened to that third act? (laughs) Right, right, yeah. Because you are writer, director, and editor here. Mm -hmm. I'm very, and, and, you know, you're the lead in the film. Mm -hmm. 
for all intents and purposes, this is your film to lose. Mm -hmm. On every level, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right, right. But I'm curious how you apportion and juggle the hats. You've got writer Michelle. How precious is writer Michelle with her words? You've got director Michelle, which then, you know, how is Michelle as a director and how well does actor Michelle pay attention and how much of a problem is actor Michelle for director Michelle? And then you've got editor Michelle who is, are you cutting in your head while you're shooting? Are you putting, forgetting about editing and just waiting until you got everything done and then you take a step back and then take a look at it. Walk me through this whole Michelle process. Yeah, I mean, each hat that I wear, I try to immerse myself in that role, um, even though they communicate with each other, obviously, to an extent. But when when I was writing the script, I didn't know from the beginning that I would definitely play this part. I thought that I possibly would, but I wanted to write the part and then decide, you know, if I felt like I could play it and do it justice. So that was kind of the first step. Um, as far as directing and acting, I've done it um, before in my mm-hmm. other feature films and in short films, and so I have experience doing that. It was more challenging this time, though, because the other films were lighter and they were funnier and there was just less going on uh, cinematically. So it was a slightly more um, challenging to do on this particular movie, uh, but we watched, um, you know, playback on set. I had a really great uh, producer, David Au, who also served as AD because we are a really small team, and he was sort of, you know, it was great to be able to trust him to handle stuff so I didn't have to worry about other extraneous stuff because just the two of us produced the movie together. And I think with directing and acting, a lot of it is, focus and being able to switch your focus really quickly and so some people they try it once and they're like oh my god I can't do that again and I think it's just it's just that's the main thing I think that to, to get it right you have to be able to section off parts of your brain and also of course trust the people you're working with and then in terms of like editing I mean when I direct I definitely have an idea of the editing and I think it helps me be economical as a director and on the flip side you know, shoot something until I know we have it and not shortchange something also. But at the same time, I mean, I re- I'm really there when I'm directing and shooting to capture the magic, hopefully, and then later go through it and really find those moments. And so I try when I'm directing to strive for a certain amount of spontaneity. I don't like to over-rehearse the actors. Um, some of the stuff is ad lib. Um, so I really try to find those kind of magic moments that in the editing room I'm able to pull together. And, you know, when you edit yourself and you're also the actor, like there's a certain amount of separation too. Like you, you can't really see that as yourself. And, and so, um, you know, there's a certain amount of distance there of really seeing that as the character of Jay rather than, oh, that's me, you know, because that mm-hmm. would also cloud obviously how you put it together. And I think one of your great strong suits, Michelle, as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, is your depth of understanding and the work that you have done in all the different disciplines that you need to know to make a film. You've got a lot of editing experience, done coloring, camera operation, you've even done grip work, you write, you direct, you produce. And all of that, I think, only enhances your vision as a filmmaker and how to bring that to life. You know what each discipline can bring and what it can take away. And I think you very judiciously know how to use each one of the cinematic tools in the toolbox to tell your story. Yeah, well, thank you. That's exciting to hear, especially because this is my first drama or slash dramedy you know, with the, with the comedic films, they're very fun to do. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of like, oh, it was funny, it was fun. But I've never gotten those kind of compliments of like cinematic language and those kinds of things. So anyway, it's very nice to, to hear you say that. Well, and, and that's so important with this film because one of the great things about this film, and I know it's being promoted as LGBTQ, but the beauty of this film is it goes so far beyond that. This, it's a story about love and heartbreak, somebody's journey. Everybody has had a breakup. 
everybody has had a broken heart. Everybody has been dumped at some point in their lives. And you hope. And you lay there and you clutch the phone, waiting. Okay, okay, they need a break. Is this a Ross and Rachel break? Or what kind of break is this? Phone, it's going to, I'm waiting. The phone's going to ring. We have all been there. Everybody, gay, straight, from the planet Mars, everybody can relate to the themes in this film, Michelle. And I think that makes this such a universal story. Yeah, well, thank you. That's great to hear. I mean, yeah, because part of what I wanted to do, obviously, was to shed light on the aftermath of a relationship because I feel like a lot of times in movies, obviously, we see the falling in love part. We see the relationship part. And then when there's the aftermath or a breakup, oftentimes it's a very quick, like, I'm crying, and then, you know, five minutes later, you're back on the horse again and you're dating someone new or whatever. And so I wanted to zoom in on this period of time in life that I feel like we don't really see that much in film that really delves into it without glossing over it and rushing to the next stage. And you also, very smartly, you do not have Jay as being a 20-something bimbo or Mm -hmm. bimbet. This is somebody who has experienced some life but still has has a lot of baggage, a lot Mm -hmm. of baggage, and is needy. Jay Mm -hmm. needs to be in a relationship. Jay needs to feel loved. Mm -hmm. And you bring all that, that very dramatic scene with with, uh, Janine's character of Lily. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, what do you want me to do? I'll do anything you want. I'll do anything you want. And we don't see that enough because that's such an important part of relationships, whether they're working, whether they're not working, but how many of us, no matter who we are, have not done that? Okay, it's got to be my fault. What can I do? I'll I'll let you do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. And you really show us that. And that's a rarity. Mm -hmm. That's a rarity, Michelle. And I appreciate where you went with this story, touching on all those things that people in their 20s aren't going to understand, but you get to people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Right. We right. understand that. Yeah. The fact that you dared to go there, I love that. I really love that you did that. Well, good. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a challenging script to write, also because, I mean, in addition to this, this heartbreak, it, it's a period of time, obviously, in Jay's life where she's stuck. And it's challenging to write a movie about someone who's stuck because, yes. you know, when you take a, a screenwriting class, it's always like, make your protagonist active, and they make decisions, and they make things happen. But this was supposed to be about a movie where she wasn't able to do that for herself. And so that was the challenge of, like, how can I keep this movie moving forward with a character who's not willing to move forward, you know? And that's why it's so important. That's where Tommy comes into play. Right. Tommy becomes your active voice here. Mm-hmm. Right. And it really works because that spurs Jay into activity. Yes, right, exactly. Jay, Tommy puts that spark of bravery. Mm-hmm. The fear is still there, but puts that little spark of bravery, and it really all comes together with uh, that drag routine, what I was <laughs> roaring. Michelle... <laughs> I was roaring, but I got to tell you, your co- the costuming, the makeup, my God, that was fantastic. That, yeah, cool. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. That's where your budget went. I'll tell you, <laughs> the lighting there, very theatrical, very stage-oriented, but, I mean, the performance is so much fun, but you look at the detail of the makeup and the costumes, mm-hmm. and it's just, of course, seeing, you know, kind of white face on Chad's beard was hilarious. <laughs> right, yeah. We talked about maybe coloring his beard like blue or pink or something, but just ended up going with the white. <laughs> I don't think the budget could have afforded any more colors. <laughs> well, yeah, I think also, too, I mean, the actor wanted to shave his beard, but, you know, with continuity, that wasn't, uh, we weren't able to do that because we wanted the beard in the other scene, so... And the white was kind of a, okay, we won't draw too much attention to it. <laughs> well, I think the costumes, the uh, lame effect of the costumes kind of took away from that. So nobody, not that many people are going to notice the beard. Right. Yeah, and I also kind of like that it's kind of a gender 
loose ending kind of thing. And oh. I mean, let's face it, Tommy, the character of Tommy is not a professional drag artist, too. They're kind of doing this as a fun little hobby. So Yeah, Tommy's not really a professional anything. He's just, <laughs> exactly. he's, Tommy is, is the guy, and he's actually very inspirational. He's the guy that's out there, let's throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. Right, yes. Yes, I want to do stand-up comedy, and he's brave enough to get up there and do it with some of the worst jokes in the world, which begs the question, <laughs> how hard was it to write really bad jokes? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, it was, <laughs> I, I had fun with it, for sure. It was kind of like a fine line because they were bad jokes, but they were like almost kind of maybe had potential, <laughs> and a lot of it was just sort of like encouraging the actor to have the confidence to approach it like it was great because he was he 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 just he knew it was not funny obviously and I had to be like you know your character thinks this is great and I want to see more confidence more confidence so I think that was the challenge of getting <laughs> that sort of like stage presence that I had in mind because the jokes were bad but then watching him and he's just like he's selling it with everything he's got <laughs> and right. you know you you laugh at that you cannot help but laugh at that because that contrast is so great but you give us so much of this. You've got a really good handle on comedic timing, Michelle. Um, oh, good. Well, I'm glad that comes across in this. Yeah, you've got a really good handle on it from a script standpoint and also from capturing it in performance. Your directorial eye really and editorial eye really kicks in and you know how to get that, t that comedic timing, mm -hmm. which is key. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because I originally... I approach the script I'm like I want to do a drama I want it to be completely serious I don't want it to be funny at all and then of course the comedy sort of crept in but obviously I think it's better for it and it helps break the tension and there's a lot of sort of intensity and moodiness and so I think it kind of helps give the audience a bit of a breath yeah now I've got to ask you where in the world did you find Eliza Blair who played <sighs> yeah, my got god Michelle she <laughs> is she is amazing. She is amazing. Walking that line of tension and not wanting her BFF that she's, you know, puppy love crush on, doesn't want her to know that. I mean, it just, Eliza is absolutely amazing. Her performance floored me, her emotional nuance. Yeah, we got really lucky with Eliza. Um, you know, Eliza played the younger version of my character, Young Jay, in high school in the 90s, and I thought going in, we, we basically, you know, we did not have a casting director, so we posted, you know, on the various casting breakdown and casting services websites, and uh, we got really lucky, and we saw a lot of people for Young Jay, and I thought that we would have to compromise on it because, you know, obviously they need to look like me to some extent, mm -hmm. they need to be able, obviously, to be a good actor, and also capture a certain kind of energy. It wasn't just looking like me physically, but having that energy of Jay. Yeah. Um, and that was hard. And we found somebody that we thought could potentially work, and we called her back. And then we were like, well, since we're calling this one person back, let's just audition more people. And then Eliza came that day. And we're like, oh. And, and I mean, the other person would have been a very distant second for this role, and so we, we really got lucky with that. I'll tell you, she just really stands out here. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, we were fortunate enough, like, we we took a break because of COVID, and we shot most of this movie prior to COVID, so when we cast Eliza, we had most of the movie shot, and so Eliza was able to watch the rest of the movie and to emulate, you know, Jay, and I, and I wanted... I wanted Eliza to make the character, you know, her own, but have that, you know, there's some some sort of small things and similarities uh, that was brought into the character that I think really helped sell it, too. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that, because otherwise I would have asked, what came first, young Jay, old Jay, or older, mm -hmm. not old, but older, <laughs> <laughs> but older Jay, or vice versa, because there are some... You can see, you can tell immediately, there was no question with the first flashback that that was young Jay. No question. Mm. The pensiveness. Eliza, bring, can, she has the ability to bring a pensiveness sitting there alone, much like we see you doing as older Jay. Right, right, yeah. And in the eyes 
Eliza, and I, I think when people met Eliza, they're like, oh, my God, it's you, like, in the eyes. And, you know, Eliza has blonde hair in the movie. I have black hair, but I, 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 I'm glad to hear you knew immediately, and I think a lot of it's just like you're saying, just that sort of energy of, you know, that pensiveness and that intensity. Hey, look, by the time we get into our 40s and beyond, if not sooner, there's a, some great products out there called L'Oreal, Revlon, Miss Clairol, <laughs> And we're all using it, so. <laughs> Hair color means nothing when you're doing a young and an older version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I, that, that's a given. Here again, it's just one more natural part of life that you have inadvertently, inherently incorporated into, the, into this film. How difficult was the complete casting? You know, finding Chad to be Tommy, Sheila is Jess. I did crack up with Jessica Graham as Daria. I know Jessica, and that nobody could have been more perfectly suited for that role than Jessica. Yeah. So how was, was it difficult to cast all of these roles? Um, well, for Shayla as Jess, I've worked with Shayla before in a couple of my other films. Um, so I, I, I brought her back. I had her in mind writing the script. The most um, challenging role to cast was Tommy, I think, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Because the character is so complex, and I, you know, I wanted somebody who was fun and energetic and charismatic, but also could sell the, like, underneath it all, there's this darkness. And so I think, you know, and I think people have different opinions on Tommy. I think when we did the test screen, some people, like, loved him. And some people, you know, were like, yeah, he's annoying, but that's kind of the point. And so I think everyone's going to have a different sort of take on Tommy. Me, I think it's, it's just both. He's got the lightness and the darkness both. And there's an ambivalence there, like, how do I feel about this guy? Ah, he's not so bad. And, oh, I'm kind of, you know, maybe I'm kind of done with him. So I think everyone has their own journey with him. But regardless, I think other than the character of Jay, he's got the most going on with him. He's the most complicated. Mm -hmm. And so getting somebody to play that role and also even though he's a bad comedian there he has some like legitimately funny lines in the movie yeah and so somebody who could do that com comedic timing and of course do the drag um thing and even though the drag dance is like you know we're, we're we're not professional dancers obviously and it's not a huge dance number like when we did callbacks we did callbacks with four different tommies and like just the way a lot of those guys approached the drag section is just like oh this is not going to work at all you know and and so that was um an interesting side that we got to see during the callbacks too to weed people out yeah i mean i think you did an amazing job and you know when it comes to the character of tommy as with mo most of my of my male gay friends most of them are adorably annoying <laughs> i say that with great affection <laughs> <laughs> they are adorably annoying. They're adorable. Uh -huh. They're annoying. So they're just adorably annoying. <laughs> That's who Tommy is. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just, it just cracks me up. Watching Chad as Tommy makes me laugh and makes me smile. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So now as we come down to you finish this, it's ready to be released into the world. And CineQuest is virtual again this year, so anybody, they can get a ticket and turn on and, wa and log on and watch this anytime. Mm -hmm. What did you, since this is your first foray into touching on to drama in a narrative feature, what did you learn about yourself as a filmmaker and a storyteller in making Maybe Someday? Um, I don't know if I have a quick answer for that. I mean, I learned so much, and we shot this over such a long period of time, because as I mentioned, we started prior to COVID in the fall of 2019, actually. And we were going to pick up the last four days of the flashbacks in the spring. Um, and then we, we ended up taking a break, and I edited during that time. And actually, it was interesting for me taking that break because I think when we did shoot those last four days of flashbacks, and that's both the J. Jess flashbacks and the J. Lily flashbacks, um, I think at that time I had learned more, too. And I think when we were filming it, you know, a year and a half later, of August of 2021, 
Um, I think that as a director, I feel like I did a better job than I would have had we gone forward with our initial shoot in the spring of 2020. I don't know how to articulate what about it made me better. I think just watching the movie and absorbing absorbing it and really thinking thinking about it on a deeper level because when you're when you're doing a movie there's so much in it sometimes it happens really fast and you kind of just like let's get it done let's make a decision let's move forward and then we had the time or I had the time to kind of let it simmer um so I don't know I mean I, I don't know like what I would necessarily take from this project to the next project but I definitely want to do another drama I, I, I think it's very rewarding on a different level than a comedy because there are so many layers to it, and there's so many different there's so many different storytelling elements that do come, I think, more into play in a more dramatic piece than a comedy, which um, can oftentimes be a little more straightforward, a way to tell a story. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've really proven yourself with this one. that You do have a really good grasp of drama and in melding it with comedy, Michelle. Yeah, um, well, thank you. That's yeah, it's great to hear. Nothing falls flat, because so often that can happen where the comedy's strong, the drama falls, vice yeah. versa. But no, here, it's very even. The editing is evenly done. You hit all those emotional beats and the comedic beats and the dramatic beats. Um, you have your flashbacks very smartly well-placed. So that it's not just, you know, a non sequitur out of the blue kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It's, well, great, I, yeah, I, I did think of quite a bit about the flashbacks and the placements of that and tying that into the present day, so I'm glad that that works. Uh, so now, once there's CineQuest, are there more festivals that will be coming up? What What are your plans for this film? Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're, I'm in the process of submitting to other film festivals. We don't have anything scheduled yet other than CineQuest is going to be doing an in-person in August. Uh, as of now in San Jose. Oh, that's great. Um, but I'm uh, but I'm planning to, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to line up stuff for, you know, throughout the summer and stuff. And then in the fall, there's just a ton of festivals. October, for whatever reason, seems to be a big month. But right now we're just in the submission stage. Michelle, this has been so much fun talking to you today. Yeah, it was fun talking to you. Thank you. And I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, I'd love to. So get to work. Make another film. <laughs> Okay, right on that. Oh, Michelle, thank you. Thank you so much. And you have a great rest of your week. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.